Deep within the sands of Egypt, a discovery has been made that could change history forever. Rumors of a long lost tunnel leading to the final resting place of the infamous Cleopatra have circulated for centuries. But now, after years of painstaking excavation, the tunnel has finally been uncovered. As archaeologists venture deeper into the twisting passageway, they can't help but feel a sense of trepidation. What secrets will they uncover? Will they find the final resting place of the legendary queen or something far more sinister? Let's go further in the video to find out. Cleopatra's dramatic life and death were so vivid that they verged on fiction, something that literary giants William Shakespeare and George Bernard Shaw noted. Shakespeare wrote about Cleopatra's story in Antony and Cleopatra, and Shaw wrote about Cleopatra in Caesar and Cleopatra. After her death, what became of the legendary Cleopatra? It is thought that Emperor Augustus gave his approval for Cleopatra to be buried next to her lover, Mark Antony, and that their three children were spared and raised as citizens of Rome, which provides some insight into how she was regarded, even by those who opposed her. It's also plausible to believe that Cleopatra and her lover were mummified by her status as a pharaoh. Mummification is a method of preservation that entails drying out human remains to keep them from decomposing, and it was a common practice at the time. This process of desiccation was accomplished by liberally applying a salt-like substance called natron, which has excellent hygroscopic properties, and by removing most of the internal organs without damaging the exterior of the cadaver. For instance, the brain was dragged out through the nostrils to prevent disfigurement, and a hole was discreetly cut in the side of the body to remove the internal organs, save the heart, which the Egyptians believed was the key to the afterlife. Either these organs were preserved externally and then placed back into the body cavity, or they were stored in canopic jars and buried alongside the deceased person's remains. After that, the dead body was wrapped in linen and deposited in a tomb along with various worldly things, and the tomb was then sealed. There is a dispute about the precise site of Cleopatra's tomb. Egyptologist and former Minister of State for Antiquities Affairs, Zahi Hawass, first believed that it could be found just outside of ancient Egypt's capital, Alexandria, underneath the Tap Osiris Magna Temple, which is more commonly referred to as the Great Tomb of Osiris. In 2019, another Egyptologist, Dr. Kathleen Martinez, who is also the minister counselor in charge of cultural affairs at the Dominican Embassy in Egypt, found mummies, figurines of Isis, and coins bearing the images of Cleopatra and Antony in the same vicinity as Hawass's claim. These discoveries provided additional evidence to bolster Hawass's assertion. Magnificent tunnel that is being dubbed as a geometric miracle beneath a temple in the ancient city of Taposiris Magna which is now a ruin on the coast of Egypt. The tunnel is said to be 13 meters below the surface and was discovered by Kathleen Martinez of the University of Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic and colleagues during ongoing excavations and exploration of the temple. And just like us, it has also left Kathleen. Her team and all the archaeologists baffled around the world. What was the purpose of the tunnel? Are there more hidden tunnels like this? And the most important one, is this tunnel finally a breakthrough to Cleopatra and Antony's lost tomb? Let's find out. Kathleen Martinez has always been obsessed with Cleopatra, and while studying the history of Cleopatra, she came to the conclusion that regardless of Roman propaganda and centuries of prejudice against women, the texts containing descriptions of Cleopatra showed she was a woman ahead of her time, who studied at a university, who had to suffer the denigration of the Romans and was strong enough to rule a kingdom. She knew medicine, laws, she was a philosopher, a poet, Martinez explained. After advancing in her research, she discovered the difference between Oriental texts and ones written by the Romans. She studied the canonical texts in detail, in particular Plutarch's account of Mark Anthony's alliance with Cleopatra. She also found that modern researchers had quite possibly missed important clues about where she was buried, and it led her to search Cleopatra on her own. Her initial hypothesis was that since Cleopatra was considered a representation of Isis, if she had to search for a place to be buried in her last days, she would have chosen a temple dedicated to the goddess. Using her own knowledge and Strabo's descriptions of ancient Egypt, Martinez sketched a map of potential burial sites and identified 21 localities associated with the legend of Isis and Osiris. After ruling out some temples, she located one on the outskirts of Alexandria that met all her criteria to be the one that sheltered the tomb, the Temple of Taposiris Magna. 
also known as the Great House of Osiris. This was at odds with another hypothesis, developed by French explorer Frank Gaudio and the European Institute of Underwater Archaeology, seeking the tomb in a place of Alexandria that had been buried underwater by an earthquake whose excavations were resumed in 1992. Following the clues, in 2002 she made her first trip to Egypt and managed to contact Zahi Hawass, the archaeologist and director of the Supreme Council of Antiquities, and also visited some temples. But when she arrived at Taposiris Magna, she understood that it was the place she was looking for. After this short trip, she returned to her country and made the decision to upend her life and prepared a project with the support of the Universidad Católica Santo Domingo to begin excavating. It was a historic moment. It was the first time that Egypt had granted a license to excavate in a country in Latin America. Kathleen Martinez herself financed the first expedition and many others. And as the work began in 2004, she decided to leave her law practice to move to Egypt and dedicate herself to archaeology. It was around 2005 when Martinez returned to the Dominican Republic, met with the Dominican Republic Minister of Foreign Affairs, was appointed as the first Minister of Culture to Egypt, and was issued a diplomatic passport. And within no time, excavations at Taposiris Magna began. Taposiris Magna is a semi-destroyed temple located on the edge of Lake Marriott in Borg el Arab, about 50 kilometers west of Alexandria and the second largest city in Egypt. It wasn't going to be the first time that Taposiris Magna was being excavated. The first time, it was destroyed by Napoleon somewhere around 1798. Seeing the condition of the temple, the Egyptian authorities considered it an unimportant, unfinished monument. But according to Martinez, in reality, it was destroyed and forgotten in the sand. As the excavation proceeded, the archaeological evidence including two subterranean chambers within the temple's walls was found. Martinez claimed it to be a new and important contribution to archaeology. A hieroglyphic and demotic stele was also located, indicating that the temple was considered holy ground. In 2018, it was announced that more than 800 pieces had been located, plus a large cemetery with 15 catacombs, 800 bodies, and 14 mummies, all from the same period. During more than 100 years of excavations, busts and coins with the face of Cleopatra have also been found. And that gave all the archaeologists hope that maybe they are working in the right direction and are close to unveiling the secret of the lost tomb of Cleopatra. After this, there was a series of strange and terrifying discoveries in what is speculated to be Cleopatra's tomb. It was on the 5th of December 2022 when archaeologists discovered 16 burials in rock-cut tombs popular in the Greek and Roman eras. Inside were poorly preserved mummies, speculated to be more than 2,000 years old. But what they found strange was that several mummies had solid gold tongues in their mouths. After carbon dating, the preserved corpses are said to be from 300 to 640 BCE. Following the strange discovery, Dr. Mustafa Waziri, Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Archaeology, held a press release and gave the possible logic behind that. He told that the reason for such solid gold tongues could be a belief system of the people of those times, who might have replaced the original organ with a gold one, as they believed that the dead will communicate with Osiris, the ancient Egyptian lord of the dead. According to Waziri, several mummies which were discovered in bad condition had gold on the bone immediately beneath the linen wraps used during the mummification process. Gold chips were fashioned into scarab beetles and lotus flowers, earthenware, glues, and tar used in embalming. The remains of human-shaped wooden coffins and several copper nails were all found at the ancient cemetery. Each burial level unveiled new shocking evidence about the different rites and methods of burying the mummies. Lead archaeologist Kathleen Martinez of the University of Santo Domingo said, There was this strange thing that the gilded decorations on the cartonage around a second mummy's head depicted a crown, horns, and a cobra snake, she added. On the chest, the decorations depicted a necklace from which hung the head of a falcon, the symbol of the god Horus. The Antiquities Ministry said a number of coins bearing the name and portrait of Queen Cleopatra VII had previously been found inside the temple, and this possibly can be a step in the right direction. But the strange discoveries didn't stop there. Just when archaeologists all around the globe were celebrating the centenary of the discovery of Tutankhamun's tomb, during excavations at Taposiris Magna, archaeologist Kathleen Martinez and her team discovered a huge tunnel more than 4,200 feet long and 42 feet deep. The excavations uncovered a huge religious center with three sanctuaries, a sacred lake, more than 1,500 artifacts, busts, statues, gold coins, a huge collection of coins representing Alexander the Great, Queen Cleopatra, and the Ptolemies. The most interesting discovery is the complex of tunnels leading to the Mediterranean Sea and the sunken structures, Kathleen Martinez told CNN. 
As it turns out, the many earthquakes that have hit this region over the centuries may have caused part of this tunnel to collapse. After nearly 20 years of research, the archaeologists believe she has finally found the lost tomb of Cleopatra. Since the beginning of the excavations, many clues seem to indicate to the teams that they might be digging up the burial site of the most famous queen of ancient Egypt. It was believed that Cleopatra and her husband, Roman general Mark Antony, were the human incarnations of the deities Osiris and Isis. We'll have to wait for further excavations, especially underwater, to confirm whether or not this is Cleopatra's tomb. It will be the most important find of the century, according to the archaeologist. Whilst it's being considered a huge discovery now, some people think that there might be no tomb of Cleopatra and Antony, seeing the nature of their relations with the Romans. It is hardly possible that they were buried with ritual and not cremated or left to rot. Considering the situation today and analyzing all aspects of history, we can say that even though we're still far away from the discovery of Cleopatra's tomb, we're a step closer now.